Hey y'all, welcome back to Andy's little homestead. We're gonna light it on fire. Today, I'm gonna teach y'all how to get new tires when you're poor. Statistics have shown that 82% of my audience have a credit score under 650, so this video is for y'all, and if you happen to be one of the lucky few above that, well, you might learn something too. So the first step is, you look at your tires, they're bolder than Stone Cold Steve Austin, and you realize you have a problem. Then you call the tire place, and you say, hey, I need tires for my 83 Dodge. And then they say, well, that sucks for you, cause that truck has 16 and a half inch rims, and they don't make a whole lot of 16 and a half inch tires anymore. You can get them. They're 300 bucks a piece. You tell them I can't afford that. And they say, well, sucks to be poor. Then you're left to figure out something else. Then you remember, hey, I'm poor. I have extra vehicles laying around. But Andy, I don't have any other boxes laying around. I'm new poor, not old poor. Oh, well, that's fine. Go to a junkyard or something. And the number one rule of impoverished vehicle ownership is that you're only going to blow it up right after you put some money into it like putting new tires on. So you pull the rims off that one and you start putting them on the 83 Dodge and they fit wonderfully up front. Then you try and put them on the back and you realize that the hub is too big for the hole. Not a problem I've ever had, but hey, first time for everything. So you're stuck with Steve Austin tires out back. Then from there you go on to Facebook Marketplace and you find a guy selling a set of rims with four and three quarter inch hub holes instead of four and a half. You pay that guy 150 doll hairs for six rims. Then you go to Harbor Freight. At Harbor Freight, you buy this nifty manual tire changer deal. You bring it home. Then you realize you don't have one scrap of concrete anywhere, but you do have some old railroad ties. You don't have any lag screws, but you do have some big old pole barn spikes. So you cobble some shit together. So now we're going to pull the crappy old tires off of our new rims, and we're going to put our new tires off of their old rims, put them on the new rims. Y'all follow me right now? Then from there, you search around your shop for a bottle of slime tire sealant because it's got a valve core removal tool on top of it. You found two bottles, you didn't find the tool. So you're gonna let all the air out the old fashioned way. We're gonna be here a minute. I guess I should do an up close demonstration for the 700 and up credit score crowd. You take literally anything pointy. You just press that little guy in the middle. That's how the air comes out. Then from there, bring your air down the tire over to your bead breaker. So then you take your bead breaker there and you put it right there on the edge of the, the rim and tire so it gets kind of in that slot there. Take your tire iron in there and you push it down. Then you realize you didn't let enough air out and you set pressing on the valve stem for the next few minutes. There we go. Now the tire is off the rim on this side. We flip it over and do it on the other side. Then from there, you take your rim and your unbeaded tire and you put it up on top right here. And there's a little metal rod that comes out. You wanna make sure that it lines up with one of your lug nut holes. Then you put on this little rubber pad to protect your high dollar fancy looking rim there. Then this little cabby boy right there and your spinny dervish. You tighten it down with the pointy end of your tire iron. Then from there, you've got to wedge your pointy into that gap right there and pry it out over the top of the rim. Wrench it out that way. Then from there, you basically just violently work your way around until the whole bead is on the outside of the rim. And then basically what you do is you lift the tire up, you get your tire iron down under the other bead and do the same thing to pop the whole tire up. And there. The tire's off. You then spend the next five minutes cursing the fact that you don't have concrete to bolt this to. You then take the old tire and you set it aside and you leave it there because it might have to hold an engine or a transmission or something one day. Then from there, you pull the tire off of the rim that won't fit on your truck just exactly as you did that last one. And there we go. Then from there, you search around the shop for some soapy water. You realize you don't have any soapy water. You go for anything that's moist and slippery. So we got tire shine. I don't know why I have tire shine. I don't think I've ever cleaned my truck, but um, I got it. 
it's slippery, it's moist. We're gonna grease everything up like a pig. Oh yeah, moister than an oyster. Then from there, you're gonna try and slam the tire down on the rim like you've seen videos on the internet done. And it's not gonna work. So you're gonna work your way around with the bar. Now this tire iron has these fancy lever guys on the end here. And what they're supposed to do is to be able to hook that on the rim and kind of work your way around. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it doesn't matter. It didn't work anyway, cause uh, that little lip right there isn't enough to grab on the edges of this rim. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it halfway to where I want it. It's gonna fall back down. I'm gonna pick up this hammer and put it right back where it was. Then I'm gonna stick the claw into the hammer in the hole. That way it keeps the one side down. And I'm just gonna use the, the same old pointy end that I've been using and start working it around. When I get to a point where it's starting to get stuck, everything's gonna slip off. I'm gonna drop it and we're gonna try it again. I will say after doing this a few times, it really just comes down to getting the right angle. And if you don't penetrate that thing just the right direction, ain't nobody gonna be feeling satisfied. But all's well that ends well. Now we gotta do it on this outer beat. So I'm gonna start speaking with an authoritative air to my voice again. And I stuck my hammer in the one side and I just pick a spot off to the side of that. And I start taking it on top of the rim, under the beat of the tire and I start working my way around. A little bit at a time. This is where the lube is your friend. Or not, maybe we done spat on it too much. And then from there, you're gonna to wanna to break out your high dollar tire bead setter mechanism thing, uh, but you don't own one of those. So you're gonna take some starter fluid or maybe a little bit of gasoline. I'm not telling you how to live your life. We're gonna cause a small explosion that sets that tire tight onto the rim. Otherwise, we hooked air up to it and just leak out the sides. Make sure that you wear like eye protection and stuff for this and keep a hammer handy. Basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna squirt extra spicy down in there just enough to turn my farm into Hiroshima. We're gonna light it on fire. And there she is, nice and tight on the bead. But we kept the hammer handy because sometimes it just lights on fire, but a nice little hit will introduce a lot of new oxygen and make it blow up. And from there, you're gonna do the rest of them. You're gonna load them up into your other currently running box. Because remember, you're poor, so your vehicles are gonna break. But if you keep one running at all times, you're in good shape. And if you got a second one, you're ready for the next breakdown. And then you're gonna drive to the gas station that has the free air. And you're gonna air them up at the gas station with the free air because like you, your compressor is broke. Quick pro tip, make sure you bring your wobble juice in your lighter just in case one of the tires got unbeaded along the way. Because if there's anything gas station employees love, it's explosions in the parking lot. Now we just gotta drive back and put it back on. Y'all, I'm super happy with that little tire changing machine. I mean, it's it's really just a matter of having the right angles and something to hold the rim, but it, it accomplishes that goal wonderfully. It does say that it'll only accommodate up to a uh, 16 inch rim, but I'll be honest, I, just looking at it, I'm pretty sure it could go up to, you know, maybe like an 18, I don't know about 20s, but, but the point is it's an option. Some of y'all may be wondering, Andy, why I go through all the trouble, man? And you just go to a tire shop, find, find a used tire shop, stuff like that to do it. Well, one, used tire shops are getting less and less. There's a lot of places that their insurance won't cover it, especially if you're bringing in your own tires to put on there, which is a shame because there are literal junkyards full of good tires that are out there. People wreck vehicles with brand new tires all the time. So it seems like a waste to let them go to waste. Well, Andy, why don't you just go get new tires on the on the worst ones well for one i'm not a single mom driving an 06 nissan altima so i ain't gonna do that b i already had those tires i just had to get the right rim combination to make it work on my truck and fourth i like doing stuff myself no way i'm not dependent on anybody to do it for me the one thing that i can't do is balance it 
much like my own brain chemistry, it's going to take a professional to get these things balanced. So you could do that, or you could just ignore it. I've tried both. Varying results across the board. Anyway, I'm happy with how it went. That tire changer costs 60 bucks. So you do one set and it's already paid for itself and, and you're in good shape. And with as many pieces of equipment as I got around the farm, I'm happy to have it. As always, I hope y'all enjoyed and hope you learned something. I love you. God bless. Look, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with all the single moms driving an 06 Nissan Altima with mismatched tires. I'm just saying, I want to know when they got together and all decided they were going to drive the same thing. Like, I know your baby daddy didn't send you no child support, but uh, Grace Lynn and Jackson with a Y have to get to school regardless. So, you know, you can change your own tires on that too.